Welcome to Building Smarter, the podcast where we explore cutting edge trends, practical strategies, and real world solutions in the construction industry. I'm Sophia Chen. And I'm Mike Donovan. Before we dive in, just a quick heads up to our listeners that Sophia and I are fictional podcast hosts created to deliver this information in an engaging way. But the content we're sharing today is very real and very valuable. That's right. And today we're tackling a topic that's transforming job sites across the globe, lean construction. With construction output surpassing $13 trillion in 2023 and projected to grow another 70% by 2040, the demand for smarter, more efficient building practices has never been higher. You know, this reminds me of a scenario I've lived through more times than I care to remember. Picture this. It's 6.15 a.m. on a high-stakes commercial build. Permits are delayed, equipment hasn't shown up, subs are short-staffed, and crews are just waiting. Waiting for gear, waiting for instructions, waiting to actually start building something. Oh, that waiting time is just killer for productivity. Absolutely brutal. And what's worse is that these aren't isolated incidents. They reflect deeper inefficiencies that affect everything. Productivity, timelines, budgets, across the board. And that's exactly where lean construction comes in. Today, we're breaking down what lean construction is, the core principles behind it, how to identify waste in your operations, and most importantly, how to implement these practices on your own projects. So let's start with the basics. What exactly is lean construction? At its core, lean construction is a project delivery method focused on maximizing value while minimizing waste across every phase of the construction life cycle. It was inspired by lean manufacturing principles pioneered by Toyota back in the mid 20th century. Right, but it's not just about copying what worked in car factories. Lean construction adapts those ideas to the unique challenges we face in construction, unpredictability, fragmentation, and high variability that often get in the way of efficiency. Exactly. It requires rethinking traditional workflows, evaluating inefficient routines, and aligning every part of the process to deliver better outcomes with fewer resources. You know, I've seen this coordination become especially critical on complex jobs where tasks across teams are tightly linked. For example, if steel erection wraps up early, but the equipment needed for electrical rough-in hasn't arrived yet, those schedule gains just disappear into thin air. That's such a good example, Mike. And lean practices help prevent those gaps by improving look-ahead planning, updating task schedules, and pre-coordinating equipment requests. It keeps crews moving and progress steady. Now there are six core principles that really define lean construction. I'll kick us off with the first one. Deliver what matters. This means emphasizing value and delivering only what the end user truly needs. For field teams, this translates to prioritizing core requirements over non-essential add-ons and ensuring the right equipment is available when and where it's needed. By cutting out non-critical elements, Projects stay on track, and resources are used where they matter most. The second principle is keep work moving. This is all about maintaining uninterrupted progress across crews, tasks, and equipment. When one thing stalls, like a generator not arriving on time, it can derail entire sequences of work. The third principle is cut the waste, which we'll dive deeper into in a moment. It's about eliminating tasks, materials, or processes that don't add direct value to the project. Fourth is improve as you go. The idea that better outcomes come from continuously refining how work is done. This isn't about massive overhauls, but rather small, frequent adjustments that add up over time. The fifth principle is one of my favorites, respect the crew's feedback. Those closest to the work are often best positioned to spot inefficiencies, safety concerns, or coordination issues early. 
when field teams are brought into planning discussions from the beginning, they can surface risks and suggest adjustments before problems escalate. And that leads perfectly into the sixth principle. Think like a system. This means viewing project delivery as an interconnected system, not a set of isolated responsibilities. When schedules and requirements are aligned early, critical handoffs happen smoothly and avoid costly delays. Now let's talk about waste. In lean construction, waste is categorized into eight distinct types. Understanding these helps teams recognize and address inefficiencies early. The first type of waste is overproduction. Ordering extra gear, just in case, may seem cautious, but it often results in unused inventory, taking up space, and tying up budget. The second is waiting, which you mentioned earlier, Mike. When crews are ready, but equipment hasn't arrived, both labor and machinery sit idle. These disruptions stall workflows and create bottlenecks that derail tightly planned schedules. Number three is transportation waste. I've seen this countless times. Equipment gets moved around a site prematurely or without clear purpose, often due to visibility gaps or overlapping responsibilities. The fourth is overprocessing, like when teams have to recheck work, double handle updates, or manually input the same data across multiple systems. Oh man, don't get me started on that one. I remember on one project, we had to log the same information in three different places. Complete waste of time. The fifth type is inventory waste, which happens when tools and materials sit unused due to both excess and lack of visibility. On busy job sites, items are often shared, rotated, or stored across multiple areas, making it easy for gear to be overlooked. Number six is motion waste. Crews spending time walking the site to locate tools, verify equipment, or chase updates that could be shared digitally. I've known superintendents who spend 60 to 70% of their time just walking the site. The seventh type is defects, which in equipment terms often means poor maintenance, leading to breakdowns. A malfunctioning lift or broken excavator can bring coordinated tasks to a complete halt. And finally, Number eight is skills misuse. When skilled labor is tied up fixing equipment, tracking down missing tools, or handling routine logistics, instead of applying their expertise where it's most valuable. So we've covered what lean construction is and the types of waste it addresses. Now let's get into the practical stuff. How do you actually implement these principles on a job site? I'll start with some equipment management tactics that can make a big difference. First, use poll-based equipment requests. Rather than sending equipment based on guesswork or past trends, make sure tools and machinery are dispatched in direct response to actual site needs. This aligns perfectly with short-term planning tools like the Last Planner System, where foremen and superintendents coordinate daily or weekly requirements based on real progress. Another tactic is standardizing inspections and transfers. Mobile-first checklists paired with QR codes or RFID tags make it easier for crews to log issues and track transfers in real time. I love the idea of applying 5S principles to construction sites. For listeners who aren't familiar, 5S stands for sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. It's about organizing your workspace, or in this case, your job site, for maximum efficiency. Exactly. When you group tools by category, clearly label storage zones, and use color-coded tags to indicate equipment status, it's much easier for teams to find what they need. I've seen crews save hours each week just by implementing basic 5S principles. Another key tactic is implementing just-in-time delivery of tools and equipment. This ensures that everything arrives precisely when required, keeping staging areas clear and operations streamlined. And don't forget about digitizing request and dispatch workflows. When a foreman can submit a request through a centralized platform, 
equipment managers can quickly check availability, approve assignments, and schedule deliveries without delays. One of the simplest but most effective tactics is having equipment managers join planning meetings and daily coordination huddles. When they participate, potential conflicts can be identified and resolved before they impact progress. And finally, use value stream mapping to pinpoint inefficiencies. By mapping out the full life cycle of equipment from request to return, you can uncover where delays or missteps occur. Now let's talk about how to actually implement lean construction in your organization. The first step is to start with a pilot site or workflow. Choose a specific job site, project phase, or equipment-related process where you can apply these principles. That's crucial. Don't try to overhaul everything at once. A successful pilot builds internal buy-in and sets the foundation for broader adoption. Next, map the workflow using value stream mapping to outline how equipment-related tasks progress across teams and phases. This helps uncover handoff delays, redundant steps, or unclear responsibilities. Then identify a change agent, someone to lead the lean initiative and coordinate efforts across functions. This person helps align departments, facilitate communication, and ensure that lean practices become day-to-day -day operational habits. The fourth step is to adopt pull planning and the LASK planner system to align work with real-time site readiness. This ensures teams only commit to tasks that can realistically be completed. Step five, digitize and standardize. Replace fragmented paper-based processes with mobile-first tools that centralize equipment requests, approvals, and tracking. And finally, review and improve. Schedule regular post-phase reviews to assess what worked, what didn't, and where processes can improve. These sessions help teams spot recurring inefficiencies and fine-tune workflows for future phases. Let's talk about the benefits of implementing lean construction. In my experience, the most immediate impact is higher equipment uptime. When machines are properly maintained and scheduled, they spend more time working and less time sitting idle or in repair. Absolutely, and there are significant cost benefits too. By cutting down on waste, overordering, and rework, teams can protect thin margins and make more strategic purchasing decisions. This is crucial in our industry, where 44% of projects end at a loss. Another major benefit is faster project delivery. Better planning and reduced delays around equipment access mean crews spend less time waiting and more time building, keeping projects on track. Don't forget about safety improvements. Clear equipment visibility and organized yards lower the risk of accidents, while connected systems support quicker, more informed responses to changing site conditions. There's also a reduced environmental impact when you eliminate excess equipment and unnecessary engine hours, resulting in lower fuel use and less overall waste. And ultimately, all of this leads to better field productivity. When the right tools arrive when and where they're needed, crews can stay focused on meaningful work without unnecessary interruptions. Let's go back to that 6.15 a.m. scenario I mentioned at the beginning. Imagine instead, permits are processed digitally in advance. Equipment is scheduled based on actual progress and confirmed the day before, and crews arrive to find everything they need ready and waiting. That's the power of lean construction. It's not about radical overhauls, but rather a steady commitment to refining how work gets done. When equipment processes are structured, digitalized, and aligned with project needs, teams can move from reactive fixes to more coordinated, confident execution. And often, it's the smaller operational shifts, like digitizing checklists, standardizing equipment requests, or joining daily planning huddles that gradually create lasting impact. Exactly. 
These improvements reduce delays, improve field coordination, and support more consistent project delivery. And that's what lean construction is all about, eliminating waste and boosting productivity through smarter workflows. Well, that wraps up our episode on lean construction. Next time, we'll be diving into advanced prefabrication techniques that are changing the game for mid-rise residential projects. Don't forget to check out our website for additional resources related to today's topic, including checklists and templates to help you implement lean practices on your own projects. Thanks for listening to Building Smarter. I'm Mike Donovan. And I'm Sophia Chen. Until next time, keep building smarter.